Hello everyone, welcome to backtracking. Let's solve the first problem, subsets. You know, most of the backtracking problems follows the same pattern. If you can crack the algorithm of subsets problem, it is very much easier to solve problems specific to permutations, combinations, sum, and generate parentheses. Let's move on to the problem statement. You will be given an input array of unique elements. Figure out the possible subsets. You see here the array contains elements 1 comma 2 comma 3 so let's figure out the subsets so first one is empty subset then subset 1 subset 1 2 subset 1 3 subset 1 2 3 and subset 2 subset 2 3 and finally subset 3 if you closely see we have three elements we framed eight subsets it means for n elements we can figure out 2 power n subsets and these are the subsets which are starting with index 0 and here are the subsets which are starting with index 1 and this is a subset which is starting with index 2 and if you closely see every subset has a choice of picking up the elements for example subset 1 2 excluded element 3 similarly subset 1 3 excluded element 2 when there is a choice of picking up the elements recursion is the right approach so let's initiate a recursive call with empty subset now we have a choice of moving towards index 0 or index 1 or index 2 let's start with index 1, 0 as we choose an index 0 we add index 0 value to the subset so the subset becomes 1 from index 0 we can move towards either index 1 or index 2 so let's start with index 1 we add index 1 value to the subset now subset becomes 1 comma 2 from index 1 we can move towards index 2 so let's add index 2 value to the subset now the subset becomes 1 comma 2 comma 3 as we reached end of the array it's time to return to the caller while returning to the caller we remove the last element from the subset so that you'll get the actual subset which is initiated from the caller that is 1 comma 2 so with this from start index 1 we done with processing index 2 there is nothing to process so return to the caller by removing the last element so again you will get subset 1 with this from start index 0 we processed index 1 let's move on to index 2 so we add index 2 value to the subset it becomes 1 comma 3 we reached end of the array so we return to the caller by removing the last element so it becomes 1 with this we processed index 2 from start index 0 there is no there is nothing to process so return to the caller by removing the last element so you will get empty subset with this from main caller we processed index 0 let's move on to index 1 add the index 1 value you will get subset 2 from index 1 we move on to index 2 add the index 2 value you will get subset 2 comma 3 as we reached end of the array we return to the caller by removing the last element so you get subset 2 with this we processed index 2 from index 1 so let's move on to the caller by removing the last element so you again get empty subset so with this we processed index 1 from the main caller let's move on to index 2 we add the index 2 value it becomes subset 3 so there is nothing to process return to the caller by removing the last element so you will again get empty subset with this we are done with processing all the elements if you are closely see we have total three elements we made total eight recursive calls so for n elements we make 2 power n recursive calls and on each, every recursive call we frame a subset it is more important that we clone the subset then we add cloned subset to the result so which is very important on every recursive call so let me walk through the code so we initiate a recursive call with index 0 and the subset and we have input array and the result list so our backtrack logic backtrack method takes four parameters first parameter will be index second one is the subset and the third is going to be our input array and the fourth is going to be the result list so as a first step on every recursive call we clone the subset then we add cloned subset 
to the result. Once we are done with it, we initialize the start index as index because initially the index number starting from 0, we move towards n and on every iteration we increment the start index. So then we pick up the current element, we add it to the subset. Once we update the subset, then we make a recursive call for the next index, which is going to be start index plus one with the updated subset and input array and the result. Once we are done with processing the subset, so it means once we reached end of the array, we remove the last element from the subset. That's it. So this five lines of code can does the wonderful job. So don't expect that you get this logic in single shot. Honestly speaking, for me, it took a couple of days to understand backtracking problems. So as it is the first problem, obviously it will take a little more time to understand. I recommend watch the video a couple of times, take pen and paper, write down the recursion tree and see how the call is getting happened and how the data is moving and updating here. So when it comes to this problem, right, one of the most important points which we need to keep in mind while writing the logic is on every recursive call, we clone the subset results. Then, and whenever we are returning to the caller, we always remove the last element from the subset. So that is what we need to understand. So let's move on to the time complexity here. If you closely see, we have made total 2 power n recursive calls and every recursive call, we clone the subset then add on to the result. In worst case, the cloned subset size is equal to given input size. So we always consider the worst case. So the time complexity becomes n into 2 power n because n is the subset size clone subset size 2 power n is going to be number of recursive calls and space complexity obviously 2 power n because we generate 2 power n subsets hope you like the explanation if you do please subscribe and share let's go and submit the solution yeah so if you closely see here yeah if you closely see here we have a empty subset here then we also initialized a result. We made a backtrack call with index zero and the empty subset. On every recursive call, we clone the subset and add to the result. Then we initiate a start index with the given index. We move towards M and we add the current element with the subset. Then we make a recursive call to the next index with the updated subset so that it will be added here. Once we reach to the end of the array, we remove the last element from the subset. That's it. So let me submit the code. So hope you like the explanation. Please do subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.